Hello, welcome to the island of Nantucket, an island situated off the coast of Massachusetts. In the 19th century, Nantucket became one of the most successful and richest towns in America due to a very successful whaling industry, more specifically a spur oil. These wells contained rare oils, which were essential to life back then. The island grew richer and richer as the demand for these oils increased. The 7,000 people living on the island embraced the culture of whaling and incorporated it into their everyday lives, idolizing gruesome practice of butchering these animals for their resources. In July 1819, George Pollard, the captain of the whale ship Essex, was sent on a two-year voyage to hunt these whales. In the November of the same year, the whale ship was attacked by a sperm whale, resulting in the puncture in the ship's pole, forcing the immediate evacuation of the crew members. The men had little time to escape, and when they did, they were forced to abandon most of the valuable sperm whale oil and livestock, only taking the food and water and equipment they needed in their whaling boats. The men were stranded at sea for over three months where they survived under an extremely strict diet, enduring dehydration and starvation. When supplies ran low, shipmate resulted to cannibalizing the crew members who died from these strict conditions. Over half the crew died due to this catastrophic event, and understanding the science behind the tragedy will help us better understand why such actions were taken. The first question that comes to mind is why was the ship attacked? There are many theories that explain so. During the 19th century, people believed the tragedy was just bad luck. One of the shipmates believed that the tragedy was caused by the whale seeking revenge. The final theory was believed that this was an act of God. However, what did happen, moments before the tragedy, Owen Chase, the first mate, was hammering down nails into a damaged whaling vessel. Male sperm whales communicate with clicking signals that shipmates describe as a hammering noise. A whale out at sea mistakenly took the hammering noise of the boat as a threat, which resorted in the whale ramming into the ship. After evacuating off the boat, Captain Pollard was put up to a very important decision to make. If the crew will travel by whaleboat to the mainland of South America, or to the Easter Island, which was relatively closer to their location and could possibly make it to the island with the ration that they had. However, Pollard decided to sail to South America due to an extremely ironic reason as explained by Mr. Dioso, a researcher in cannibalism. This is Hood Island, which is where the Essex made a crucial stop for a resupply, which was a month before the attack. There's a lot of wildlife on Hood Island, and some of that wildlife even made it on the whaleboat after the shipwreck. on board because they're of their tender meat and the fact that they don't need a lot of food in order to stay alive. This guaranteed them to have fresh meat to be killed. Turtles proved themselves to be helpful during the voyage, especially after the shipwreck, providing them with food in order to stay alive. The crew members devoured the turtles, eating their hearts out, sucking the bloods out of their veins and eating them down to the bone. However, this still didn't stop them from resulting in this leads to the next important question. How did the crew eat such wretched and foul things on their voyage? To be able to understand this, we must explore the human mind and instinct. The human mind has many ways to keep the body alive. Orexin is a hormone released by the brain, making humans have sharper senses and develop hunting skills, making them willing to eat anything that will keep them alive. Many people stranded out at sea in modern times who never have eaten fish or strange parts of fish can relate. It is described that people grow a desire to eat the eyes, heart, and sip.
dip the blood of fishes even though they might not like it. Orexin makes them crave unusual parts of animals because these parts of the animal have the nutrients to keep them alive. After all fat cells are depleted, the brain sends signals to all body functions to slow down in order to conserve energy. Once the body reaches its limits, it begins to cannibalize itself. Back in 2005, a French man, Jean-Luc Josset, was trapped in a cave in the French Pyrenees for 35 days. His body underwent the same thing as the crew, where it basically cannibalized itself in order to stay alive. The only difference was that Jean-Luc had access to water, which poured in from tiny cracks. It showed that the human body is capable of surviving on its own without food, however water becomes the largest necessity to the body. Without water, the body is unable to regulate body temperature, create moisture for the eyes, mouth, and nose, lubricate joints, flush out waste, carry oxygen and nutrients to cells, dissolve nutrients and minerals, and prevent constipation. This stresses how important water is to the human body. The disaster of the Essex became iconic to Nantucket's history as well as America's history and literature. The disaster acts as a template to all natural disasters that the outcome is calculated by instincts and a leader's take on the situation.